Come on. Thank you, man. Uh, so what you're saying is that you could manage one of these independent artists who wanted to do a label and get all this stuff accomplished. That's, that's, that's what my company does. Um, that's what fine. I, that's what I wanted to be clear about. Any other questions before we, because we're getting pretty close to the end here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I hear a lot of like Facebook, MySpace. When they come to your page, you know you see professional artists, big artists, and they're tricked out pages and stuff. Of course, if you don't have somebody who can do graphics and stuff like that, what is key like to grasp my attention, or what should definitely be on those pages when you first come to artist pages? Are there some key things you would think of, or? Yeah, I mean, I think really just a, a link back to your, like let's say someone stumbled upon your MySpace, a link back to your website because everyone should have their own personal website. So a link back there, and that's kind of where you, because when people are browsing MySpace, it's kind of like they're, they're just on there and they're gonna listen to your, to your songs and maybe friend you or not, or just think you suck and leave. But if they want to get deeper involved in what you're doing, like buy something or, or see more streams of your stuff, they'll go to your website, and when they do that, I, I guess the question was more like, what should you have on that page? It would be like the essentials, a contact info. Um, well, once you already have a fan base though, what you could really do on these pages is what you want to do, really, this is the goal, is set up campaigns and contests to really engage your audience. So let's say you have 400 fans. Well, those are people that are going to be talking about you. So you, what you could really do now is what's called listening to the groundswell. And you could listen to what they're saying as far as like asking them a question. I do this all the time. Uh, I manage a group called Town Business. Well, they're not a group, they're a label. And so they have about nine artists under them. And so I go, yo, one of the artists is Jay Stalin. I go, what should Jay Stalin, on our Facebook fan page, I go, what should Jay Stalin be for Halloween? And I got like 16 replies in five minutes, everybody's saying, oh, Stewie, or oh, a devil, or oh, blah, blah, blah. So what that is, is a way for people to kind of give their input in what you're doing in your daily business to business, and also with, hey, who will think it's cool to go, um, uh, to go watch uh, Transformers 2 with Velo, and you can make a contest out of that. And uh, what it does is you can drive them back to your homepage and then capture their data by giving them something for free, like free download of the album, uh, exclusive content of some type, and just to make a note about your videos, your YouTube videos, try to keep them under two and a half minutes, because data shows that after that, people just don't even really want to see a video. video. Yeah. Because they kind of do video snacking, is what it's called. I would add two things to what you just said, and I totally agree with everything. Um, one is that data is just, I mean, not just as important in terms of paying your rent, but data is very important, uh, even in comparison with money. So if you can get, some, get someone a free track, but you get their email address, or you get their zip code, very important. The second thing I would say is whatever website or MySpace page you have, as someone who has to surf these damn things all day, keep them clean, keep yeah, them simple, fly. not a lot of dancing unicorns. Or <laughs> yeah, you don't want no fly. Like, like you said, the contact information, the music, the videos, it'll speak for itself if it's good. I don't need a bunch of other bells and whistles. What about reverbation? Reverbation, yeah, that's another one. It's good. They got great tools. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I personally like about them is that they're not white labeled, meaning every time you use something reverb nation, it has a big ass reverb nation logo on it. And that's kind of, I, I don't like, like that personally because for aesthetic reasons, if you're trying to make your brand, if your brand's purple and reverb nation is red and brown or whatever, it's disgusting. <laughs> There's other alternatives. There's, uh, like I said, if you want the widgets, TuneCore, which you'll already be using for your distribution, also has pretty good white labeled widgets. And, uh, yeah. A couple other services. Are we done with the questions here, or does it occur to anyone? Go ahead. I keep on seeing all these artists that are just giving away their CDs is, like, at shows and stuff like that. I keep on telling them, like, maybe at least, like, a dollar or two, but is there any other way, like, you can just give them something that's just, like, a digital, like, uh, piece, and they can just download it for free and download get tracks? Yeah, exactly. I, have, I carry this around for the last two years, and I show everybody that, uh, for the cost of what it would cost you for like a thousand CDs, you're basically paying like a dollar a unit. So you're gonna pay anywhere from like 800 to a thousand dollars for like a thousand CDs. Uh, for a thousand dollars, you can get like 30,000 of these things. And these are download cards. And they're thicker than a business card. They feel like a credit card. And if you hand this to somebody, it has your website and a little code. And so you go to the website, first of all, and for an exchange of the email or by using a little code, you will get their data and they will get their song or their album or your mixtape or whatever that is. So this is the best thing because you, you don't leave anybody out. You can service everybody with these things. If you have a thousand of them, you can pretty much give it to everybody in the room. And it's also something physical they get to take away. And I've kept mine in my wallet for the longest time, so that might even be an artifact that they keep and treasure. So what is it called again? Uh, they're called download cards. There's a whole bunch of services that do it. There's drop cards. Yeah, there's, yeah they're the best in my opinion. Or there's disc revolts, but drop cards. 
Uh, I think disc makers will also make them for yeah, you. Yeah, they, they offer that service as well. Isn't disc market makers in Berkeley? Yeah, I believe so. No, is it this? No, they're in Fremont. Fremont? Fremont? No, they're in Berkeley. Well, they're in New York now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Disc makers. Disc makers. They're in oh, Berkeley. Oh, wow. They're everywhere. All right. I thought they were in Berkeley over on Addison. Yeah, they are. All right. Okay, yeah. I think we maybe have a couple minutes left, and if there aren't any other questions, I would love for you gentlemen to be clear about what services you offer and what might be useful to the audience participants. So if we can start with you, Holly. Sure. Um, let's see, the services we offer, basically we, uh, we like to, to work with uh, bands that want to tour their asses off and, uh, <laughs> and, are, and are just out there pushing their music all